Not too long ago, we talked about why comic book sales will likely never recover. In this video, I want to talk to you about some things the comic book industry could possibly do to improve sales and preserve comic books for readers of future generations. Right here, right now, coming at you. Hey all my comic book associates, Dante D here and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. The response to the video that we posted discussing why comic book sales will never recover was actually really great and there were some really great discussions that I was having with some viewers in the comments. And this really got me thinking, what are some strategies that the comic book industry could possibly use to start improving sales of their content. All of the strategies that I'm going to outline today have been mentioned by more than one viewer in the last video that we did talking about comic book sales. So some of these ideas are mine and others come from the comic book community as a whole. And we are all by no means sales experts, but this is likely what comic book fans who are currently reading comic books today want to see from the comic book industry. The first thing that I feel the comic book industry needs to do to increase their sales is to increase the accessibility of their content. Let's face it, the direct market sucks. And if you don't know what the direct market is, I'm not gonna get into it too much, but basically the direct market is the method of comic book distribution, which makes comic books available only in comic book shops and nowhere else. Before the rise of the direct market in the 1980s, comic books were sold pretty much everywhere. And a lot of you who are watching right now probably remember comic books being sold in grocery stores, corner stores, drug stores, newsstands. They were pretty much everywhere. Now, I don't know exactly when comic books stopped being sold in all those places that I just listed, but I think it was sometime around the early 90s. In this day and age, the only place you can buy comic books really is either online or in a comic book store. In my opinion, if you want to promote the proliferation of a particular medium, you really need to make it accessible. You are definitely not making comic books accessible by only making them available in comic book stores. And let's just face it, there are very few people that live close to a comic book store or can walk to a comic book store, but there are many more people that live close to a corner store or a grocery store and can walk to a corner store or a grocery store. Let's think of it this way. If you're a kid and you want to get into comic books, you're kind of going to be slightly deterred because the only place where you can buy single issue comic books are at the comic book store. And you're always going to have to look for a ride to the comic book store. This was actually my experience growing up. I started reading comic books when I was about 13. And so that takes us back to about 2002. And I never could get into single issue comic books because I always had to find a ride to the comic book store and I couldn't always be bugging my parents to take me to the comic book store. Once in a while they would bring me what I would end up buying are just like a few trade paperbacks. Yes, trade paperbacks. Comic book sales may be struggling, but the sales of trade paperbacks are actually improving. Let's think about that. Why? Because trade paperbacks are available in your mainstream stores, especially bookstores. And if you're watching, you don't know what a trade paperback is. A trade paperback is essentially a collection of multiple issues of a particular comic book series. So for example, this one here, it collects issues one to six of Batman from the new 52. So it takes those first six issues, puts them all together in a book format and sell them all as one. So this is actually great because you get a complete story. If you're in the US and you go to some place like Barnes and Noble, or, or if you're in Canada and you go to some place like Indigo, there's a whole section of, of what they call graphic novels, which are trade paperbacks. So why is someone going to go to a comic book store when they just want to read comic books, when they could just go to the bookstore and buy a bunch of different trade paperbacks, which will keep them busy for a long time. Let's face it, a comic book takes you what? 15 minutes to read, 20 if it's a little longer and has, if it's really text heavy but a trade paperback will keep you busy for a while. So it actually makes a little bit more sense to go to your bookstore, pick up a few trade paperbacks, as opposed to going to your comic book store and buying a few comic books, which you can essentially just read all in one day. But I believe if comic books were available everywhere like they were in the past, people would gamble a little bit more with their time. They would just be in line at the grocery store and say, ooh, look, a Batman comic. and they would, 
pick it up and take it home to read. They wouldn't have to sit at home and think, hmm, I really want to read a Batman comic. Let me see if I can drive 20 minutes to the comic book store and pick one up. The other thing that I feel that comic book publishers really need to do is lower the price of comic books. Comic books are just way too expensive for what you're getting. Let's face it, comic books nowadays for the most part cost $3.99 a book, okay? $3.99 gets you maybe a 32 page story, which you are finished, like I said, again, in maybe 15, 20 minutes. Now, $3.99 may not sound like a lot. When you think about how much time it takes to read that comic book, is $3.99 really worth it for that? Some people walk into a comic book store and they buy five or six comics. That'll run them maybe, I don't know, 30 to $40. And they can literally finish reading those comic books all in one day. Conversely, you can take that same amount of money go and get a few trade paperbacks and that'll keep you busy for much longer. And you're probably asking me, how do you propose to lower the price of comic books? We can all just say, hey, lower the price of comic books, but I mean, these publishers need to make money as well. I think there actually is a way to lower the price of comic books and that is to use cheaper materials in the production of comic books. Do you all remember when comic books were all printed on cheap newsprint? Well, that certainly is not the case today. Comic books today are printed on high quality, glossy paper, which actually is annoying if you have a light over top of you, this, this ugly ass glare, and it's really annoying. I believe that if publishers were to actually just go back and start printing their books on newsprint, you actually probably could lower the price of comic books. That's what I think anyway. Now, I'm no expert on the printing business. If you know a little bit about the printing business, let me know. But as a general rule of thumb, one would assume that newsprint would be cheaper than glossy paper. Am I correct on that? Another point that many viewers made in the comments was that comic book companies tend to oversaturate characters. And what do I mean by that? Stop putting Spider-Man in every single title that you have because he's a popular character. And DC, stop putting Batman in every single title just because he's a popular character. For the most part, I think comic book readers are pretty smart and they can see what you're doing. Another big one was to stop crossovers. This is actually something that has personally bothered me about the comic book industry since I've been reading comic books is the whole idea of these like company-wide crossovers. They're super annoying because if you're new to comic book collecting or comic book reading, with crossovers, what will happen is like, say you read Batman and you only read Batman. Well, now there's a huge crossover story. And in order to get the complete story, you would have to buy another title. So you'll get to the end of one issue of Batman. And it'll say story continued in Superman number 79 or something like that. And then now you have to go and buy a Superman title, something that you don't normally read in order to get that complete story. It is super annoying because they just do this to, to get more money out of comic book readers. And it's, it's really, really irritating to all of us who love the comic book medium. I actually remember this happening to me a few times back when I was reading new comic books and being increasingly annoyed with it. So for example, I, uh, I used to read I, Vampire, which was in the New 52, and there was one story arc that they did which crossed over with Justice League Dark. I, I didn't normally read Justice League Dark, and I wasn't interested in Justice League Dark. However, in order to get that complete story, I had to go and buy two or three issues of Justice League Dark just to read that story, and I was, I was very upset about that. Stop focusing on variant covers. That would be my next point. Variant covers are literally a dirty vestige of the 90s that everybody just wants to forget. I don't know, understand why they continue with variant covers. I know there are some collectors out there that absolutely love variant covers and they try to collect every single cover of a particular issue. You're literally just paying for a different cover. The story in that book is the same. Do we really need all these different covers of the same issue in our collection? And I'm not trying to shame you or hate on you if you like variant covers. I just think your average comic book reader just wants to read the story and they're not really caring so much about the different covers that that particular issue has. Am I right about that? I don't know, let me know in the comments. And the social justice warrior rhetoric in comic book stories. 
We talked a little bit about uh, Social Justice Warrior Marvel and DC in our previous video, and I think that struck a nerve uh, mm -hmm. because all at once, all these people came out and started saying, oh, I hate Social Justice Warrior Marvel, it's so annoying and so irritating, and like, I personally am not a, am not a huge fan of this new direction that Marvel is taking. However, I, I don't absolutely hate it like some people do, but there are some people out there that really, really despise the social justice warrior type stories. And again, I do plan on doing a, a whole video dedicated just to social justice warrior rhetoric and diversity in comic books, which will be coming up rather soon. I think I already know the answer to this, but what do you all think about this direction, this diversity direction that Marvel and DC are taking in their books, please let me know in the comments. The last point that I would like to make, which is probably the most important point, is that new generations need to care about comic books if this industry is going to survive. And there was a really great comment written by a viewer, and I don't remember the viewer's name. I'm sorry if you're watching, I apologize, because what happened was with the uh, comic book sales video that we did, I actually had to repost that video because uh, the video was not showing up in HD. YouTube's been having some problems with uh, converting videos and making them available in HD. And that video was up for a whole week and it was still only showing in glorious 360p. So I had to take the video down and I had to re-upload it. So all the comments from the original upload were lost. So. If you're watching, I'm really sorry. Please let me know in the comments if you were the one who made the comment about new generations needing to care about comic books. But my question is, how do we get new generations to care about comic books? Because as we discussed in our last video, there are so many distractions for kids nowadays that they don't really even really care about reading. I'm not just talking about comic books. I feel like kids today, for the most part, don't read books or comic books or magazines as much as people from my generation and below. So if you have some sort of a theory or some sort of idea that you think would work to bring a new generation of readers into reading comic books, please let me know in the comments. I think this would start a very interesting discussion. So that about does it for our video today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I would really love to hear your thoughts on this discussion. Are there any other strategies that you think the comic book industry can use to save the industry and bring new readers in? And as always, if you like this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and sharing. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.